This is Chicho. Now what we're going to do in this video is continue our discussion on how to study. But this video is going to be a little bit different than the previous videos we've done because this video is going to be specifically geared towards mathematics. In the previous videos, we sort of talked about some of the things we could do to optimize our studying abilities, to optimize our ability to absorb information, right? Uh, we basically talked about uh, us figuring out why it is that we're studying what it is that we're studying, right? We put aside enough time that we could study for longer periods as opposed to shorter chunks, right? Because studying longer is better, right? Uh, we've got, you know, a good space, nice comfortable space to do whatever it is that we're doing for us right now being sitting at a table for you it might be at the beach at the park wherever you're comfortable studying do it right and we got our schedule we got our to-do list we've gone through um, our books our textbooks and basically we figured out what it is that we need to practice what it is that we need to learn right for this video right now what that entails is doing a little bit of mathematics specifically doing some algebra and what we're going to do in this video is do some math problems and take a look at the pattern that emerges for a specific type of question, for a specific type of problem. Okay. And what that's going to do or what we should keep in mind when we're doing this is um, when it comes to mathematics, certain questions, certain problems play out in a certain way when it comes to algebra specifically. There's certain things you do to solve equations. There's certain things you do to graph functions. And that doesn't change uh, based on what the numbers are in those equations or how, the, how complicated those equations look if they're the same type, right? So as long as we know a certain pattern associated with a certain type of question, then that means we know how to solve all questions in that in that type of that type right uh, mainly anyway there are certain variations but in general if we know the pattern for a certain question we know how to solve those types of questions okay as for what we're going to do now we're going to take a look at a few different types of questions and uh, I've covered some of this uh, previously in the language of mathematics in series 3a and 3b and one of the first things um, we did was uh, I showed you basically when we're solving equations, um, you know, when we're moving around an equal equal sign specifically, and that's what's required here, right? Uh, to do algebra, you basically have to know how to move around an equal sign, right? And one of the things I showed you, which was um, super powerful, was cross multiplication, right? I said, just imagine having having one fraction equal to another fraction, right? To solve these types of problems, all you do, here, let's bring out a red pen for this. All you do, you cross multiply, right? You take the bottom over here, kick it up there, bottom over here, kick it up there, and it becomes multiplication, right? So what you end up doing is, for example, let's say you have 2 over x is equal to 5 over 7, right? What you end up doing is grab this guy, kick it up there, grab this guy, kick it up there, right? You line up your equal sign as always, right? Whenever you're doing algebra, try to line up your equal sign, right? 7 times 2 is 14. x times 5 is 5x, right? Now all we've got to do is just divide by 5, divide by I, uh, I like writing my x's on this side, write it there. This is 14 over 5, and that's your answer, right? This was the most basic, one of the most basic patterns that I showed you in a while ago in Series 3A, and this is something you should always keep in mind. This is, this is something you're going to use always, right? So, for example, let's say you had something more complicated. Let's say you had x plus 1 over 2x minus 5 is equal to 7x plus 2 over x minus 1, right? The pattern doesn't change 
this is a fraction equals a fraction so all you do is take this kick it up there take this and kick it up there right so cross multiplication is a pattern that you should always remember because it comes in super handy and all we do for this one is line up our equal sign this guy comes up here and multiplies this right times x minus one right this guy comes up here and multiplies this so we got 2x minus 5 times 7x plus 2 right sorry if this is a little bit too small right so all we do now is for this type of problem we have to multiply this out and that's foiling right that's sort of another pattern that emerges where you know i never really understood the term foiling right but what it was uh, for me, it was just a visual thing that I used to used to do, which is basically this multiplies this, this multiplies this, this multiplies this, this multiplies this, right? Same with this. This multiplies this, this multiplies this, this multiplies this, and this multiplies this. This is another pattern that emerges in mathematics. No matter what type of bin binomial you have multiplied by another type of binomial, this is exactly what you do, right? Now, if we multiply this out, we're going to get x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. 1 times x is x. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Over here, we do the same thing. This multiplies this. 14x um, squared. This multiplies this. is going to be plus 4x. This multiplies this. is going to be minus 35x. This multiplies this is going to be negative 10, right? So first pattern, cross multiplication. Second pattern, foiling, but, you know, multiplying two binomials together, right? When you do this, you combine the middle terms. For most, a lot of rudimentary simple binomials, that's what happens, right? So this becomes x squared this kills this minus one is equal to 14x squared minus 31x minus 10 right and this brings us to another question another type of question that comes along that you end up getting in mathematics right and what you end up doing is bringing everything to one side of the equation so if we wanted to solve for this, for me, I'd like everything to come to the left side, but I want my first x squares to be positive, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and bring it over, and I'm going to grab that and bring it over. As we talked about previously, this becomes minus x squared, right? And this becomes plus 1 because the sign changes when we're moving them. So this becomes 14x squared minus x squared is 13x squared. And I like my, my numbers, my variables to be on the left side and my zero to be on the right side, right? So I'm just rewriting everything. I'm gonna put the zero here. If I had more space here to put it all in, line up my equal sign, I would have fit it here, right? This becomes negative 31x minus nine equals zero and then we end up solving for this by factoring as something else we covered in series uh 3a and b right for this one it would be a complex trinomial factoring or we would use the quadratic equation right so this is one pattern right cross multiplication here's our second pattern which is foiling right and you can this process can occur when we have you know more than binomials multiplied by binomial right we could have a trinomial let's do another pattern here sure let's say we have a binomial 2x minus 1 times 3x squared plus x minus 4 right let's say we wanted to expand this what do we do well we do the same thing as the pattern here says, right? So we grab our orange marker. 
this is the same type of pattern right associate this with orange if you want all you do is every term here multiplies every term here right so this multiplies this 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 right that's the same pattern as this this just happens to be a binomial times a trinomial this is a binomial times a binomial right let's say we have a trinomial times a trinomial pattern doesn't change right it's just, well the main pattern doesn't change it becomes a little bit more complicated but the general just is the same thing right let's say we have x squared minus x minus 1 times 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 right well for this it's the same deal as this as the same deal as this every term here multiplies every term here right so this multiplies this multiplies this multiplies this this multiplies this multiplies this oops multiplies this right this guy it becomes complicated now right it's not really complicated because you never leave these here right you go boink 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 if you want you go this multiplies this this multiplies this this multiplies this okay and so on and so forth right so one pattern that we have is a cross multiplication pattern you should always know this another pattern we have is when polynomials multiplied by polynomials right binomial times a binomial simple binomial times a trinomial not bad trinomial times a trinomial the lines become you know messy but the process is the same right so let's take a look at some more complicated types of problems uh questions that we may encounter side now one type of problem we get is basically having a polynomial on one side of the equation and polynomial on the other side right when we get these types of problems the name of the game is to combine like terms bring everything to one side set the other side equal to zero right and we talked about why it is that we have to set the other side equal to zero and what happens when we do this usually we end up getting a certain type of v when we're solving for a polynomial okay now what we're going to do is we're going to do a single variable polynomial first so you see how simple it is and then we're going to do a more complicated one where we have a single variable but we have powers so let's say we have something like this Now, this type of problem you usually get in grade eight or so. And the name of the game for this is, for these types of problems is, line up your equal sign, okay? And what you're going to do is combine like terms on either side first before you move around the equation. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna combine this guy and this guy. So two x plus five x is seven x. Negative six plus four is negative two. 7x minus 4x is 3x. 3x plus 3x is 6x minus 1, right? And now what we're going to do is, whenever you have one variable, you want your variable in general. I like it on the left side, and I want the numbers on the right side. So I'm going to grab this guy, bring it over, change the size, becomes 6x. Grab that guy, bring it over, plus 2 oops this is minus 6x right if we bring a positive over it becomes negative so 7x minus 6x is x and negative 2 plus a uh, negative 1 plus 2 is 1 so your answer here becomes 1 right and this is the pattern that emerges when you're solving these types of problems when you're solving equations which is basically a v right and then you get to your answer okay. so whenever you're solving these types of equations if you're solving for a variable or multivariable equations you want to bring the variables to one side and number to the other side possibly 
right? So what we're going to do for, just to show you that this works for other types of questions, we're going to do a variable that, uh, an equation, a question that ends up being a quadratic on one side, okay? So let's make this longer, bigger, right? 2x squared plus 5x squared minus 6x plus 4 minus 2 plus 1 is equal to 7x squared minus 4x squared plus 1x plus 3x squared minus 1. Okay. Now this looks nasty, but the process is the same. We're going to combine like terms on either side first. Line up your equal sign. 2x squared, 5x squared is 7x squared. Negative 6x plus 4 is negative 2x. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. 7x squared minus 4x squared is 3x squared, right? 3x squared plus 3x squared is 6x squared. 1x doesn't combine with any other x's, so we keep that as plus 1x and negative one, right? And if you wanna know how to do this, we talked a lot about these types of things, combining like terms in series three and three B, right? So we can't combine anything else anymore on this side, but, right? We can't combine anything on this side anymore. Now what we do is we bring all the values to one side because what we're gonna recognize for these types of problems is we don't have you know, we can't combine an x squared with an x. So we're gonna have two terms here that are gonna stick out. So we can't just automatically get isolate x. We're gonna have to factor this thing, right? So that's something we're gonna have to recognize, right? So we're gonna bring this over. This becomes minus six x squared. We're gonna bring this guy over. This becomes minus x. And we're gonna bring this guy over and this becomes plus one, right? So on this side, we have zero left, right? On this side, we have 7x squared minus 6x squared is going to be x squared. We got negative 2x minus x is negative 3x. And 1 minus 1, they kill each other, right? So we're down to here. What we're going to do now is factor out an x. So x comes out. We got x minus 3 left here equal to 0, right? This, so far, is just what we had here with an addition process of factoring, right? So we still have our V, right? Our thing going like this, right? Because what we're trying to do is simplify, simplify, simplify. And to solve this right now is something that we've talked about again in series three and three B, which is the power of zero, right? We've talked about the problems associated with zero being that we cannot divide by zero, right? When we divide by zero, we get undefined. We don't know what happens, right? The, the universe, our universe explodes, right? That's the problem associated with zero. But there's also a benefit associated with zero. The benefit with zero is the only way that you can multiply two or more things to give you a zero is if at least one of these things is zero. Right? And since we don't know which one is equal to zero, we set both of them equal to zero. Okay. So the power associated here is we can do a split with this. We can split this thing. Okay. And when we split it, what we end up having is we can set this equal to zero and x minus three equal to zero. And we got x is equal to three. And if you notice, this thing here is also a V. It's a mini version of this and a mini version of this, right? So when it comes to algebra, what we do for a specific type of problem can be embedded within the problem, right? You can think of these things as modules that you can add on to certain types of problems, powers that you have that sometimes you need to use, okay? So this is, I guess, if you wanna think about it, the third type of pattern that emerges for us. Okay. Let's take a look at, you know, other types of patterns that do emerge when we're doing problems like this, okay? 
so there are three types of patterns that we have right now right the first one is cross multiplication right where we can right that's one pattern now in English we call this cross multiplication in other languages we call it different things right we have foiling right plus or minus let's say we have polynomials multiplied together right something in here or more the pattern that emerges for this is I guess some people call it the foiling pattern this multiplies this, this multiplies this, this multiplies this, this multiplies this. And we saw more complicated versions of those, right? And we have, oops, and we have um, equations that we end up solving, right? If we're given a certain type of problem, right? Where we have an equal sign in the middle, we've got something on one side, another thing on that side. What we end up doing is doing this right reducing simplifying combining like terms until we get an answer where x or whatever variable it is equals that thing right and this was sort of the third pattern that we have and these these are things that uh, parts of algebra that show up everywhere uh, they're sort of modules or sort of things that we end up doing for all types of problems, right? These aren't specifically for this, right? We we do a lot of questions like this initially to learn how to do this, right? We do a lot of questions like this initially to learn how to do this, right? We do this, right? Part of the process of developing part of solving equations, right? Doing problems, doing algebra. But these themselves are embedded parts of other larger types of problems we end up getting so those are three patterns that we have let's take a look at a look at another one let's do um what we're going to do is solve uh system linear equations with two variables and then after this we're going to solve a system linear equations with three variables and you'll see how they're similar and one builds on the other and they actually end up using these things here right or this thing here okay so let's do let's say you know we get a system of linear equations that are this let's do x plus 2y is equal to 6 and 2x minus y is equal to 3. Okay. now this is something that i haven't covered yet it's called system of linear equations um, two variable basically two dimension right and what these are is that's a line that we talked about in series one the equation of a line and that's a line as well so whenever we get something like this what we're doing is we're trying to find out where these two lines cross and there's three things that can happen with this thing they could cross they could have have an intersection where there's one solution they might be parallel or they might be lines on top of each other and I'll get into detail of solving these types of equations later in the future right now we're more interested in the pattern that emerges when we're solving this okay so what we do with these types of problems is we try to eliminate one of these variables so we only have one variable left okay and for this what we're going to do is we're going to make a decision to eliminate let's say the y so to eliminate the y from this because this is a system which means they're together right what i'm going to do is combine these two equations but the way i'm going to combine it is i'm going to combine it in a way that this guy will kill that guy now for this guy to take out that guy there needs to be two of these guys here right so if i end up adding two of these equations to this two y's to this that's a negative y so 2y plus negative 2y is zero they kill each other right so what i end up doing is i number my equations for these guys always my equation one is going to come down here again right x plus 2y is equal to six my second equation what i'm going to do is 
multiply it by two the whole equation and when you do that this becomes 4x that becomes minus 2y is equal to 6 right and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add this equation with this equation so if I add this I'm going to get 5x this kills this and this is going to be 12 and then I'm just going to divide by 5 and I'm going to divide by 5 so x is going to be equal to 12 over 5 okay this is a system of linear equations with two variables and the pattern that emerges here is to a certain degree and this is you're going to do this uh, a lot if you're doing these things is you multiply it down here you move the equations down if you need to multiply them by whatever it is that you need to okay combine your like terms right add these things whatever ends up dropping off drops off and you have x is equal to 12 over 5. now what you end up doing is taking the x and plugging it back either into this equation or this equation because you still need to solve for the y right so when you're solving these types of problems it's a good idea to plug them into both of those to make sure it becomes a check to make sure that this is correct right so what i'm going to do is I'm going to plug it into equation one and I'm going to plug it into equation two. Okay. So what we have here is this is going to be 12 over five plus two Y is equal to six. Plug in it to the first equation, right? And this is going to be two times 12 over five minus Y, right? Is equal to three. Now, we've talked about what the best way to do, what the simplest way to do this is. You can multiply the whole equation by, by five to get rid of your fractions, right? So multiply this whole thing by five. So this becomes 12 plus 10y is equal to 30. Multiply this whole thing by five, right? Two times 12 was 24. Right, so this five kills this five. 24 minus five y is equal to 15. So what I'm gonna do is solve for y here. I'm gonna grab the 12, bring it over, minus 12. So this is 10 y is equal to 30 minus 12 is gonna be 18, right? And I'm gonna divide by 10, divide by 10. So y is gonna be equal to Two goes into both of those, nine over five, right? Hopefully this is the same here. Oops, this should be 15, not 150, right? So I'm gonna grab this guy, bring it over, it becomes minus 24. So I have negative five y is equal to, 15 minus 24 is negative nine. Divide by negative five, divide by negative five, and you get y is equal to, 9 over 5 the same answer right so what are the patterns that emerge multiply whatever you need to multiply right you solve your equation which is a v really right it doesn't look like it but it is because it's so simple right we split it up to do a check okay again this is this guy right this is again a v that's a v as well okay and we end up getting our answer and we end up getting our answer right so this is a more complicated right pattern that emerges when we're solving system of linear equations and it's sort of built there's three three of these guys in this right blue Blue. Blue. So if you know how to do this, the only additional thing you need to do is sub this back into this, right? So you, ha you would have to know that there's substitution involved here. And the only extra thing you need to do was this guy, 
right? So this is a system of equations using two variables, right? Let's do a system of equations using three variables. And you'll see this pattern emerge. This is going to be embedded within the other one, right? So let's take this aside. What we'll do in this example, in this equation, is do a system of linear equations using three variables, right? Basically meaning it's in three dimension. And I'll get into detail about this um, in the language of mathematics in future videos, right? Because I, this is a topic I haven't covered yet, right? So let's assume we had the following three equations. We had x minus y plus z is equal to 2. We got negative x minus y plus z is equal to four and let's say we had two x plus y plus two z is equal to one okay now the name of the game for this is we want to find out what each one of those variables are right we're trying to find out where these three three-dimensional lines cross right so what we're going to do is number these equations let's call this equation one two and three okay so what we're going to do is we're going to try to eliminate one of the variables in the first step to solve this to solve the system right so let's assume because this is going to be easy eliminating the x the axis from equation one and two we're going to try to eliminate the axis and then that way i have two equations with y and z right so first thing we're going to do is generate two new types of questions two two new equations right so what i'm going to do i'm just going to add equation one plus equation two okay so if i end up adding these i'm going to rewrite these x minus y plus z is equal to two and negative x minus y plus z is equal to four Okay. So what I can do right now is I can add this equation with this equation and this is going to kill this, right? So this becomes negative 2y plus 2z is equal to 6. And I'm going to number this equation equation 4 because it's a new equation, right? That we derive from combining equation 1 and 2. Now I need to get rid of x in my next process as well, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to combine equation two and three, but I'm going to have to multiply equation two by two because I need a negative two X here to cancel out two X, right? So two times equation two plus equation three. That's what the algorithm, what I'm going to be doing, right? So this is going to be negative two X minus two Y plus two Z is equal to eight. And I'm just gonna write down equation three by itself. Two X plus Y plus two Z is equal to one. And I'm gonna combine these two guys. If I combine them, this guy kills that guy. This is negative Y plus four Z is equal to nine. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna number this equation five, right? And what we need to do now is, this is the system that I need to solve. Well, this is what we had in the previous example, right? So from now on, all it is, is the previous system. So all we have is this process, right? That we're gonna do here. Okay. So that's the pattern that emerges. So what I have to do is, is make a decision of what variable I'm going to get rid of, right? For me, I'm going to get rid of the Z, right? For me to get rid of the Z here, I need this guy to be negative 4Z because when I add them together, the negative 4Z plus 4Z, they'll eliminate each other, right? So I'm going to multiply equation 4 by negative 2, okay? 
And equation five, I'm just gonna bring down by itself. So equation four, if I multiply by negative two, I'm gonna have um, negative four y minus, oh, I'm gonna have positive four y, my bad, positive four y minus four z is equal to negative 12, okay? And I'm just gonna bring this guy down, which is negative y plus 4z is equal to 9. And one of the things that I've mentioned before, which is super important, is try to line up your equal signs, right? Whenever you're doing mathematics, whenever you're doing algebra. Now, what's going to happen here is when I add this guy and this guy, this is my equation 4, this is my equation 5, right? This is going to kill that guy. So that guy's gone and that guy's gone. So this is going to be 3y is equal to um, negative 3, right? So all that happens now is I divide by 3, I divide by 3, so y is equal to negative 1. So what we have right now is the y value. We figured out what y is here. What we need to do is find x and, find x and z. Now, we can't go directly from here to here. We need to do one step in between. We need to figure out what z is, right? So what we're gonna do is bring this guy up here, sub and y is equal to negative one here. And that's gonna give us the answer. Now to make sure that we did this correctly, I'm gonna also gonna do it here as well. I'm gonna sub and y is equal to negative one here as well. To make sure I end up getting the same answer for z before I do the next step, right? So this becomes negative one and negative is one, plus 4z is equal to 9. I'm going to bring the 1 over. It's negative 1. So this is 4z is equal to 8. And then I'm going to divide by 4. So z is going to be equal to 2, right? That's my z value for this. I'm just going to have to make sure that that's correct, right? So I'm going to bring in negative 1 here. So that's going to be 2y plus 2z is equal to 6. Oops, not negative 2y, it's just 2y because I subbed in negative 1 for y, right? So negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. Right? And I'm going to grab the 2 here, bring it over, minus 2. So I have 2z is equal to 4. And I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2. So z is equal to 2. Same answer. So, so far, I know that I've done this question correctly, right? Because I have the same, most likely anyway, same value for Z. Now all I have to do is figure out what the X is, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of these equations and plug in the values for Y and Z and find out what the X is. So let's do it for number one, right? Let's plug Z is equal to 2 and y is equal to negative 1 in the first equation, right? In equation 1. So what we end up having is this is x minus negative 1 plus 2 is going in there. 2 is equal to 2. Okay. Negative and negative is positive. So that's going to be x plus 1 plus 2, which is going to be 3. So this is going to be x plus 3 is equal to 2. So x is equal to negative 1 when I bring this over, right? Let's do the same thing, but plug it into equation 2 or 3, just to make sure we have the right answer, right? So let's bring in y is negative 1. Let's bring in x is 2 into equation number 2. So we're going to have over here, if you take a look at it, negative x minus negative 1 plus 2 is going to be equal to 4. Negative x, negative and negative is positive. So 1 plus 2 is 3 is equal to 4. I'm going to bring this guy over. So that's negative 3. So we've got negative x is equal to 1 
So x is equal to negative 1, right? The same answer. Okay. So I know I've done this question correctly. So the final answer for this would be, if we're going to fit it down here, or we could put it here, is going to be x is negative 1, y is negative 1, and z is 2. That's my final answer to this question. Okay. Now, do you see the patterns that have come up? If you get any triple system here, any three variable system of equations with three equations that you need to solve, this is the pattern that you're going to see. Okay, let's actually highlight this, show you what it looks like. Okay, let's bring this guy over here. Let's do this guy in green, yeah? Let's lay this out in green. Now, what you're going to see here is the same pattern showing up for all questions involving system of equations involving three variables. Sometimes they're simpler because sometimes you can kill two variables in one shot, right? When you add or subtract the equations, which we could have done here, okay? But this is the main pattern that appears, right? So what you're gonna have initially is your questions, your three equations, right? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna split them. And what you're gonna do is combine your equations and come up with equation number four and equation number five, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna combine equation number four and five into an answer for one of the variables in our case, it happened to be y, right? So, so far we've done this, we've done this, we've done this, we're here. And then what you're gonna do is, you're gonna plug these back into here, right? And that's exactly what we did. And what you're gonna do is, you're gonna solve, if this is solving equations, right? If this is solving, right? If this is, well, not solving, but doing the algebra, calculating something. What we're going to do, we're going to do a whole bunch of calculations here, right? So we're going to do a bunch of calculations here. We're going to get our next variable. We're going to do a bunch of calculations here. We're going to confirm our next variable, right? This better match with this, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring numbers from here, plug it into one of these equations do more calculations and come up with our next value, right? We're gonna combine, right? We're gonna do our calculations and we're gonna come up with our next vari variable, which hopefully should confirm this, should confirm with this, right? And this guy with that guy. Okay, this is the main pattern that shows up for any type of question you get, for most of the questions you get with three variables. Okay. This is what you should keep in mind, and then you write down your answer here, right? Okay. A beautiful pattern. If you understand this, you know how to do all questions involving three variables, right? System of equations involving three variables. Should we do another one? Let's do another pattern. Now, let's do another pattern just to just to finish this off with, um, because the questions, uh, the questions are infinite, the types of uh, questions you can get. Um, I just really wanted to make sure that you appreciated a certain type of pattern that emerges with certain types of problems, right? So, so far, let's do, let's do a little recap, right? So far we've had Right, 
cross multiplication where we're taking the sky and multiplying here taking the sky and multiplying here oops that's the first type of pattern we saw the second type of pattern we 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 looked at anyway was multiplying polynomials right. i think we did that in orange right. so this is the second type of pattern third type of pattern that we looked at was just solving equations right Exp you know something like this you end up you end up simplifying simplifying reducing lining up your equal sign and getting an answer here right we did system of equations with two variables right we had our two equations here and we basically were running out of colors so I think we used orange so we multiplied one of the equations by something another by something else right and we brought the calculation here found an answer we back substituted in one of the other equations right where we basically did this where we did this right and we did more calculations right and we got an answer right and our answer would be your x and y whatever they were right if they're different variables they're different variables is this guy and that guy and this was confirming this right that sort of pattern that emerged for a system of three equations right we had one two three equations show up and let's do this in green i guess where we split this up right did calculations brought it back did calculations right kicked it up did calculations right brought a number from here brought a number from there brought a number from there brought a number from there kicked it into one of the equations here or two of them just to confirm right so we did calculations and we got our next answer right so we had an answer here i guess i should do this in green we got an answer here we got an answer here which was the same as this and we got an answer here we got an answer here and those this this and this or this this and this same deal would be our answers to this question right and these are some of the patterns that we have right now and one thing you should notice one thing you should recognize is that these patterns the simpler patterns occur inside of the other hard, more complicated patterns, right? This occurred here, this occurs here, right? Um, cross multiplying, if you're dealing with fractions, you end up using, we end up using here or here, right? This guy here, system solving system of two linear equations is embedded within this system, right? This part here, this guy and this guy are really this guy and this guy. When we're multiplying one of these equations by a value to get come to here, and when we solve for it, the back substitution here is really this. We're back substituting into one of these equations, right? And getting a value, right? And then the extra part is taking this value and this value and subbing it into one of these guys, taking this value and this value and subbing it into a different one, make sure we get the same answer, right? That way that confirms that we did this question properly, that we got the right answer, right? Especially if we're doing our test, right? Because we don't wanna throw marks away. So there's like five patterns that we've, we've got here so far. And this guy is really embedded within this. We could call this pattern four, I guess. What are we gonna call this? What color? Let's call this black pattern four, right? So that's pattern four. So this is just basically algebra 
some algebra patterns that show up whenever we're trying to solve equations. For the last sort of pattern, we're going to graph an absolute value function. And we're going to do an absolute value of a linear function of a line, which is one of the most simple functions that you can have. Okay, one of the most simple graphs that you can have. Now, for those of you that don't know, and I will cover this at some point, uh, the absolute value symbols, but absolute value symbols mean that inside the absolute value symbols, you could be positive or you could be negative. But once you use up the absolute value symbols, once you use this power, once you come out of that symbol, then you have to become positive, right? But when you're in the inside, you could be positive or negative. And that's the property. That's what we're going to do to solve this, uh, to graph this function, okay? Because that's what we're going to need to do for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this function when the inside is positive, and we're going to take a look at this function when the inside is negative, right? Just to see what they look like, what this function looks like. So when it's positive, this becomes f of x is equal to positive 2x minus 1, right? And when it's negative, this becomes f of x is equal to negative 2x minus 1. Now, when we apply the positive, nothing changes. This thing stays what it is, right? So this becomes 2x minus 1. When we apply the negative, this becomes negative 2x plus 1. Oops, plus 1, all right? So what we're going to do is graph this function. So we're going to draw our coordinate system here. And I think we talked about graphing lines in series 1 right so the way you graph lines is you use um, y equals mx b the concept of y equals mx plus b and this is in the format of y is equal to mx plus b where b is your y-intercept and m is your slope right so this is our first equation right this is our second equation and whenever you have more than one equation to deal with in a question number them that way you know which one you're you're dealing with right so if we're graphing this one our y-intercept is negative one and our slope is two over one so one two and one okay this is our first line and whenever you're graphing multiple lines on a graph multiple functions on a graph number them this guy is y-intercept is 1, and the slope is negative 2 over 1, so down 2 over 1, here and here. Okay, and this is equation 2, graph 2. Now, this is not the graph of this, right? Because this is not a function, right? For a given x value, we have two different y's functions is something that we're going to talk about in series four right or we are talking about in series four so this is not a graph of this this is the graph of this guy and this is a graph of this guy what we want to do is draw the graph of this so all we need to do now is test the point on this graph for x and y to see if the equation is true now the only point that we cannot test is where the two lines intersect because that's they give us the same answer at that point so what we're going to do is we're going to pick a point anywhere outside of that that line right so what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out what y f of x should be when x is somewhere either on this side or on this side of this point now it's easy to figure out what it is pick a point on this side because we know this is x is equal to zero, right? If this is x-axis, if that's y-axis, the y-axis is x is equal to zero. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test x is equal to zero in the original equation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find f of zero. f of zero is going to be two times zero minus one, which is going to be 
0 minus 1 and this is going to be absolute value of negative 1 which is just 1 so when x is 0 y has to be 1 right when x is 0 y is 1 when x is 0 y is 1 so we know this point is on the graph that means this point is not so what we end up doing is killing everything below the point of intersection where they intersect and this graph this guy right here this function graphs like this goes up okay it bounces off the x-axis okay. and we'll talk a lot more about these types of functions in the future and this process is something that you do this method of solving absolute value equations is the same thing that you do no matter how complicated this polynomial becomes here you split right you take it positive you take it negative you solve right you graph you test a point and you figure out you test a point in the original function you figure out which one it is right if we want to take a look at a more complicated one here let's do a more complicated one let's have this beside us while we do okay so this pattern here is split split calculation calculation right graph it and test it and then eliminate kill whatever you need to kill right and it really doesn't make a difference how complicated those questions might be so let's do another type of absolute value function uh, which is a lot more complicated than this and we're not gonna graph it we're just gonna look at the pattern that we have to follow okay now this is a quadratic function if the absolute value symbols weren't there right so that's a quadratic function and we want to graph the absolute value of a quadratic function now the way this function is going to look like is again we have to do this we have to take it positive and we have to take it negative so what we would do is we would take this function the positive of this And we would have to take the negative of this. Six. Okay. So the positive of this is just whatever it is. X squared plus 5X plus, oops, plus 6. And we would have to graph this guy as negative X squared minus 5X minus 6. Now there's a process here to be able to put these in the form that we need to be able to graph them. So you would do a whole bunch of calculations here called completing the square. Okay. Which is the simplest, you know, more complicated version of just rewriting this, right? Because when you're graphing a line, you just have to get in the form y equals an x plus b. When you're graphing a quadratic, you have to get in the form of y is equal to a x minus p squared plus q right and over here you would have the same thing so you would do something called complete a square through the whole process and then you could graph it for this one uh, the factors of this are two and three so x plus two x plus three so we know that x plus 2 and x minus 3 would be one, two, negative 2 and negative 3 would be the x-intercepts and then this thing we know it opens up so it would go like this okay something like this and this guy would do the same thing but I think this way right so let's assume the graph I'm pretty sure it's like that but let's assume the graph of this looks like this right okay so this one would be our first equation. This one would be our second equation. So this would be our first equation. And this would be our second equation. And then all we would have to do is test an x value in 
the original function to find out which one of these it is, right? So since we're not going through x is equal to zero, what we would do is test the simplest x we can, which is x is equal to zero. So f of zero would be zero and zero. So it's just the absolute value of six, which is a six. So when x is zero, y would be six. Somewhere here, we know this guy goes through this, right? So we know that we're gonna kill the bottom of the x-axis. That's the way it's going to work, which makes sense because f of x is y, y can never be negative. So that means y can never be negative. So what we would do is kill this, right? And the graph of this function would look like this okay and this pattern is the same pattern as this right we broke it into positive negative we did our calculations whatever they may be to get our functions in a form where we could graph it right where we graphed it we tested a point it was easy for us we tested x is equal to zero right we found out what this was we plotted that point and we killed below wherever the intersection of the graphs was right so we killed these guys right and i'll get into these types of functions these types of graphs a lot later in the language of mathematics okay and this is i guess you could consider this to be the sixth type of pattern that we have right And if you see any absolute value functions that you have to graph, this is the main gist. These parts are modules that you have, patterns that you have from a simpler thing that you need to do. These would be something originally that you learned before you learn how to do this one, right? So it's a combination of things. You're bringing patterns from doing algebra, solving equation this way, and you're taking one from this way. And if they happen to, uh, cross paths you use them both okay. and that's the way you should think about um, solving equations doing mathematics if you're working on problems okay and it's um, you know it's 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 nice to know how these patterns look because it gives you powers it gives you abilities yeah it allows you to remember how certain question uh should be solved okay and that's you know tip number six that i have for you and specifically math related is recognize the type of problem you have right and remember the pattern that you need to be able to solve that equation to be able to answer that question to be able to graph that function I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Now, before we begin uh, taking a look at these patterns, okay, I got one more quick hint to give you when you're doing algebra, when you're solving equations, right? When you're doing problems in mathematics, and that's not to take your eyes off the question until you finish a specific type of question right if they're if they're short enough that you can focus for that long right because one thing that happens one thing that i've seen students do is when they're doing a certain type of problem when they look away right and they can't look back at the problem again sometimes they drop a negative sign sometimes they change of addition to a subtraction right sometimes they forget a number or a variable right and that basically means from that point on they're making mistakes the answer is not the correct answer right so keep this in mind when we're doing this when you're doing when you're doing algebra when you're solving a problem don't take your eyes off that problem until you're done if you need a break if you need to give your eyes a break then once you finish once you get the answer you're you're finished with the algorithm you're finished with the process what's required to solve that question right then look away before you move on to the next question or before you check your answer.